Hi, this is Vicki Goforth Parnell, and I have come to share a word from the Lord that I received last night. Um, I was praying and asking him, do I need to release it last night? And he said this morning, I was sitting at the feet of Father God and praying and talking with him, and all of a sudden this word came. And it happens sometimes. You sometimes you just you get the feeling and you know he wants to talk and another time just like bam. And this is one of those. Before we start, I want to pray. Uh this word is called the day of reckoning has come. Twelve twenty three twenty three at eight thirteen PM was when I received it. This is twelve twenty four twenty three and it's seven oh four AM and I've been um pray and making sure this is when he wanted it released he did tell me to pray something um, to read something so father god i'm going to be obedient psalms 23 psalms 23 we're so used to it we don't grasp the true meaning of it it's one through six the lord is my shepherd I shall not want. Meaning, I shall not lack nothing I need. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He maketh us not forcing. He causes me. By supplying your needs, He causes you to have. Green pastures is food. And then he, the water, your needs. He restoreth my soul. He gives you rest. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for my name's sake. The paths of righteousness. You want to be bride ready? Let the Lord lead your life. He's faithful in all he does. And paths of righteousness. You got to be holy. Be holy. As I am holy, the Lord says. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's persecution. But he will be with us every step of the way. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Meaning, right even in the middle of the enemy, God is with you. He will feed you. He will clothe you. He will take care of you. Remember Daniel in the lion's den? You know, he took care of him. Right in the middle of the enemy. The lions, the hungry lions. Six, surely, surely, definitely, most definitely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever meaning when it's done and gone i'm going to be in the house of the lord forever the house of the lord heaven what a promise all wrapped up in one little psalms psalms 23 and normally i read a lot this morning but he had me just read that over over which I will read more later. Lord willing. I did sleep last night with the um, first Samuel playing all night. That's what he told me to play. All right, so let's pray. I'm asking you to pray again. And just let the Holy Spirit lead. His will be done in all things. Father God, your will be done in all things. I come in Jesus Christ's name. Jesus Christ, I pray and ask you answer this prayer. Holy Spirit, lead this. Lord, I pray that you would open the, the eyes of all to see the truth of what time we're in and to see the truth of your words. I ask you open their ears to hear and their hearts soften it so they can receive not only the words, but they can soften you, Jesus, when the Holy Spirit draws that convicting power and brings them to a point to decide, accept Jesus Christ or not. And I pray that all, that all resistance and all hindrances would be stopped so that they can clearly make the choice themselves. 
to accept you or not without hindrances from the enemy. Now, once again, Lord, I'm asking and praying, please put us under the barrier of stealth and invisibility. Hide us, Holy Spirit. You're also called the Holy Ghost. So as a ghost, let us go in and out of the enemy territory so that we can get accomplished what needs to be done. And this can be loaded up unhindered in the power and authority of Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, Lord of all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And again, I declare, I've done prayed this, there's no retaliation from the kingdom of darkness of any kind. This is a, a holy decree, a decree I'm making in the name of Jesus Christ and the authority, in the authority of Jesus Christ's name, being an heir of the kingdom of God by his royal blood that now flows in my veins when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, as each of your children have that same right and authority. And I give you praise for it, Lord, and I love you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Father God. I love you, sweet Holy Spirit. Take my life and use it wherever you need it. It does not matter to me wherever you need it. That's where I want to be. I submit to you. I surrender to you. Your will be done because you know what needs to be done. I'm good with whatever, Father. As long as you use me and as long as I can sit here at your feet where I can just spend time with you. Oh, I love to spend time with you, Father, in Jesus Christ. Daddy God, I love you and I love just sitting at your feet. Hallelujah. Now, Father God, every weapon that's been formed against us, according to Isaiah 54, 7, 17, does not, will not prosper. So right now, in Jesus Christ's name, every form of evil communication in existence, known to you, Father God, and you exist everywhere, past, present, and future. You exist in all things. In, in in every whatever, in all of the all, you exist. So every form of evil communication against me, this ministry, my family, and those I can cover, my brothers and sisters, in Jesus Christ's name, I cancel. And I mean my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. You know who are the true and who are not. You know who are the, the wolves hiding in sheep's clothing, Father God. Your spirit discerns all things. And Lord, let us be wise as serpent and gentle as doves. Not harmless, not helpless. We are gentle because even you, Jesus Christ, you showed righteous anger when you were in the temple and the money changers and you took care of those that were defiling the house of God. Gentle as doves, not harmless as doves. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, too. Every power of the kingdom of darkness that they're operating in. Every weapon, gizmo, gadget, technology, electronics. Every AI, every other type of spirit, every computer quantum and above or below in Jesus Christ's name I bind it I cancel it and I command it to be bound and not interfere in Jesus Christ's name I take the king the kingdom keys Lord Jesus Christ I ask you to do this and lock up my systems and everywhere I'm going so the enemy cannot interfere and I seal it in the blood of Jesus Christ and put a Faraday cage of heaven's gold around it and around me in Jesus Christ's name so we can get these words out. And to every person, every person. Now, Father God, I know you have been sealing this side in the blood. I'm also praying for when, when the people receive and it's time for them to hear that they hear because these are going up fine and correct but other people are having issues well in the name of jesus i bind those demons that has been sent to interrupt 
the transmission of any kind or the hearing or the receiving on the other end as well in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, I ask that angels be sent down in Jesus Christ's name, warring angels, to take their place and ensure whoever needs to hear this. See it. Read it. You take it where it needs to go. I give you glory. I give you praise. Holy Spirit, is there anything else that we need to pray? Send this to the north, south, east, west, in all existence known to God. Because God exists everywhere to wherever it needs to go. I bind the machines. I bind the weapons. I bind it all. I cancel it, Lord. And I ask that every order, and when I say evil communication, that includes any orders that's been issued while I was sleeping, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, in every evil gathering, in all existence known to God, because God exists everywhere, I command you to scatter and not regroup in the name of Jesus Christ. And bind the spirit of retaliation, interference, backlash, and all the sub-demons in Jesus Christ's name. And I loose the Holy Spirit and the peace of God and the fruits of the Spirit and understanding and knowledge of God in Jesus Christ's name to all which has the hearts to receive in Jesus Christ's name. Anoint me and don't let me speak a word that's not from you, Father God. I've laid this before you. I've prayed over it. Ask you if I wrote anything down wrong. I've discern the spirits i've done all and you said it's good to go it needs to go so father father god jesus christ holy spirit in your name i'm releasing this word thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord amen <clears throat> okay again i received this word yesterday at 12 23 at 8 8 13 p.m and it is what it is it's called the day of reckoning has come. I prayed over the name. That's the name that he gave me. And I want to make one comment of my own. I am not affiliated with any political party. I do not do politics. I do not have favoritism. So when something is mentioned, it is because God has told me. I will not even form an opinion. I pray and ask the Lord because he sets up kings. He sets them down. He's a ruler. Because... <clears throat> I'm just saying because of this word. So I'm sitting at Daddy God's feet, praying, and all of a sudden he speaks. Trump rises. The king returns. All hail the king. The return of a king who was before and is to be again. The rightful king wrongfully deposed. He is chosen by me, thus saith the Lord. For the matters at hand which are war upon an ungodly nation. War, war, war has come. War has come and still you stiff, excuse me, still your stiff necked hearts still refuse to bend their knees. Putin will fire. Putin will fire. Putin will fire. I have declared it, thus saith the Lord, God, Jehovah, ruler of all. I set kings up, I cast them down. None can contend with me. The age of grace shall pass as one cycle of time closes and a new emerges. But it will not be the sound of a jubilant celebrations. Excuse me. It will not be the sound of jubilant celebrations and dropping balls from New York City, you shall see, because my judgments fall this night, this time of allotted allotment upon you, O godless nation of Babylon. Have I got your attention, O world and godless nation, yet? I will before your new year begins. Seasons come and seasons go. But now I send to you, O Babylon, a season of snow and a season of cold. The weatherman says, look how warm it will be. I in turn shall send a deep freeze. Foolish people, it's time to repent and bend your knees before your God and Creator. And I will spare some from my wrath to come. 
If not, then no, it is your choice, your decision to partake in what is to come. Look up, my little children. For soon I send my son for those whose robes are spotless white in him. The time of judgment has arrived to the godless nation of Babylon, once called America, but no longer to me. I send these things to thee. A shaking and quaking like never before. War, 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 no food, no drink, and pestilence and plagues to come. And there's three days of darkness yet to come before all the world to be a party to. Where will I find the faithful in all that is to come before my son arrives? On their knees before me and in my holy word. Judgment time has now appeared upon your earth. Shudder and fear, howl and well, for the time, for this time, my hand shall not be stayed by mercy's call upon my heart. To my sons, 144,000 warriors of light, I say, it's your time of now. Your season has begun. I shall, excuse me. I have sealed you. Now your time has come to pick up your swords and stand and fight with my son and our angelic host. Prepare your hearts for further instructions in me. But do not move until you know I have sent your orders directly from my throne. Orders I shall give to you to my son Jesus, and he will speak to each of his own in the special way he knows each one of his little children. In the special way, he knows each one of his little children. I say to the rest of our little children who have made themselves ready in me and my son, I say it's time to come home. It's time to lay aside your armor and weapons and enter into everlasting joy and peace that we have prepared for you, my children. It's time to rest. So hold on and stand strong in the power and might of my son Jesus Christ's name. He will not fail you, nor will I. It's time to come home. It's the time in my timeline of the time, excuse me, it's the time in my timeline of the end time season for my son when I speak to bring you home to stay with us forevermore. And now judgment is fully birthed, and the last few birth pains are transpiring. Prepare yourselves. I say prepare yourselves. And that prepare yourselves tells us we still have a little to go through. But it's time. Here are the verses. Daniel 2, 21. Psalms 2, 1 through 6, Matthew 25, 21, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, Isaiah 64, 4, Jeremiah 50, 1 through 3, Isaiah 13, 2 through 13, Jeremiah 10, 12 through 13. Job 37, 9. Luke 21, 11. Isaiah 29, 6. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. Zephaniah 1, 14 through 16. John 8, 24. And Psalms 9, 8. So please pray about this. Again, I'm, excuse me, I, I'm not affiliated with any kind of politician. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. I'm affiliated with Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God. God, Jehovah. 
Holy Spirit. So please understand. When we get a word, and I'm talking about people in general that serve the Lord, and the Lord blesses us with a word. We don't have a choice what we write down. We have to be obedient. We have to just write what he tells us, and then that's it, you know. You get the word. You pray over it. You you, you seek the Lord. Make sure this is what you want. Do I send it out? Do I not? You be obedient. Regardless of what people are going to say or what they're going to do. And the way he words it, you know, I'm... Some of it's pretty obvious. Putin will fire. That's pretty straightforward. You know, you, you understand what that means. Vladimir Putin of Russia will fire upon us. We've got to get down though and pray. Again, I, I've been... Trying to tell people, I know that the rapture is imminent. I, I feel it, smell it, I hear it. I, I just, it's all around. It's in the very existence. I mean, I just feel it. But I also know we're not appointed until the time of wrath. We're not appointed unto wrath. Meaning, and it says all throughout the verse, and I'm not just taking that one verse. There's all kinds of verses that says we are not his children. Are not supposed to endure the, his wrath. I'm just going to read just a few of the verses. I, I've got them separated. Lord, which one is it? Because I've been. Because I'm, I, I quote that one, but that's not the only one. Oh, okay, I hear you. So I have a um. A book here that I this is my book on um when I'm helping people pray in and separating what is um my warfare book it's my warfare manual <laughs> Lord where did, where did I put that because I mean I quote the one verse and a lot of people say you know use that verse in other ways I'm not arguing I'm just saying there is so many verses that talks about once the time of wrath comes, which is written about in Revelation 6 and then written out about further and they start pouring out the vials and all. We, his children, are not appointed. We're not to be there because he's going to take care of us and we're going to be moved. We're going to be removed. Some may come be removed by death, by other means. Because there's so much coming. Shaking and a quaking. You know, he's still talking about an earthquake. He's talking about this very big, big earthquake coming. Is that what, what he's talking about? I feel it is. But, Father oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I know it's in here. <laughs> I had another one I did. All right, I know it's in here, but I'm not going to stay on it much. It's just there is so many verses. You can look up Wrath of God, and you can start, you know, finding that it, it does. We're not, here. It is not a point to wrath. First Thessalonians five nine, Romans five eight through nine, Romans one eight, Nahum one two, Second Peter two nine, Psalm seventy five eight, Hebrews ten twenty six through thirty one. Psalms 2189. That's just a few that I've written down. Just as a reference, so I can do a quick reference. That says, you know, during during the, the wrath and anger, and, we're not supposed to. His children. Why would he send his fierce wrath and indignation on his children? And I'm not talking about disobedient children. I'm talking about children that he loves and that's serving him. Because when you, you just, when you send out your correction, well, it's not really correction. He, you're, you're, they're being recompensed for their evil ways. Please pray about this word.
He give he, now when the Lord gives you a word, unless He gives you a date. It could be this year. It could be next year. I'm just giving it to you. It could be when, whenever He says it will be. But what really caught my attention. I don't normally do this, so is when he said, Judgment time has now appeared upon your earth. We've been having judgment, judgment which has been birthing pangs. The judgments that's been falling upon the earth is not the full, the judgment, full judgment to come. Judgment time has now appeared upon your earth. Shudder and fear howl and well for the time, for this time my hand shall not be stayed by mercy's call upon my heart. Let's pray about all these things. Lay them before the Lord. Try the spirits. I encourage you. Try the spirits. For your own safety. For your own spiritual safety. That's found in 1 John 4, 1-3. First, first, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. If you'll do a study on the Hebrew, false prophets also means religious leaders. And that is when you take and study the, the Greek word. I think Greek's the New Testament. You can study it, um, the, the origins of the words. Find the root. Although, go back and study it and get the true meaning because even in translation sometimes they don't get the whole the whole meaning. First John four. First John four one through three. And then also thirteen through five talks about whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he is God. And then you have First Corinthians twelve three. So God has made a way for you to discern the spirits. Try the spirits. You do that in Jesus Christ's name. Everything is done in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you ask him to help you, he will help you. And when you start, am I to do this, Lord? Go over it again. I'm going to go over how to try the spirits one more time. First John four. I'm going to read one through. Th I'm going to read where he tells me one through three. Excuse me. Yeah, one through three, verse six, and then I'll read thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. This is the verses I use in this chapter. There's also, I think, John, Second John two. There's only one chapter in Second John. Um, Second John seven. Excuse me is another verse that goes with this. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are our God, because many false prophets, religious rulers, that covers a whole lot of things when you look up that, are gone out into the world. These can also be your fallen angels, your Nephilim, your demon-possessed people. Understand. When Lucifer fell, it was not just one that fell. And it never said that everyone was bound. We know those that looked upon the, the women in Genesis 6 and took wives. Those were bound for a season, for a time. It does not say till the time of judgment or till the time well, that we're in judgment. That it be released if they haven't been already. And pray about that. Just take it to the Lord. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Verse 2. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Some say come as human, come as man, but it's the same thing, meaning Jesus Christ, flesh. He came in this world as flesh and God. 
So every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Meaning, made by God. That's why a fallen angel can answer yes on this. They are angels created by God. We'll get to that in just a moment. And every spirit that confesses not, spirit, every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, wherefore ye have heard that it should come, and even now is already in the world. Your demons. They can't do that part. Number six. Here about, they, 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 they can't say yes, just so you'll know. We are, we are of God, verse six. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of error, truth, and of error. Spirit of God is truth. Spirit of Antichrist or, or the dark kingdom is spirit of error. Antichrist. So if you are questioning the Lord something, as we all, we all hear from him different ways at times. So for instance, I'm listening to a, to a preacher and I said, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, is he preaching the truth? And if I get yes or no, say for instance, I get, get, I get no, and I say, Spirit that spoke to me, do you believe Jesus Christ came in the flesh? If he said yes, then I know it's not a demon speaking to me, but I need to do the other questions because it can still be a fallen angel. And I know some people don't agree with this, but I'm saying you take it to the Lord because I have seen them. I have dealt with people that can answer part and can answer the other. Why? Because they're not of God. And they answered on the first one. We go down to, um, I'm going to go ahead and grab this one, then I'll grab the other one. 13, 14, and 15 of 1 John 4. Hereby know we that we dwell in, that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. So, you can also say, Spirit is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And you need to say, Jesus Christ. Because there's many people and many Jesuses in the world. And when you're addressing and trying not to be deceived, trying to get the truth, you need to specify and make sure you are talking about Jesus Christ. Because if you leave a loophole, the enemy is going to use it. You understand? Even if it's a, even if it's the size of a pinhead, they are going to use it. So you need to do this. But you pray about this. Lord willing. In the name of Jesus Christ. So there is no way they can say this was not Jesus Christ. He said Jesus. You might be actually talking to a spirit that's named Jesus. You, you don't know. Because there's bar Jesus in the Bible. Another Jesus in the Bible. The other way. Now this is the way the fallen angels can't answer this one. 1 Corinthians 12. 3. Whereof I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. And I know people say, it says no man. Okay, well I did the Greek study. No man is a phrase together. It is Uders, O-U-D-E-R-S. I may not be saying that right. It's G8, sorry, G3762 in the Strong's Concordance. And it means not even one man, woman, child, or thing. None, nobody, nothing, neither, anything, never, not. So we go down to that and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord. And that no not even one man, woman, child, or thing. None, nobody, nothing, neither, anything, never, not, can say that Jesus 
He is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. And we know they are referring to Jesus Christ because all this this is re in ref reference. As you go down further into the scriptures, he talks about the body of Christ. All this. It just it's amazing. The word of God is amazing. But you go down to verse 12 in the same chapter, and he calls Christ out. We know it is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And even though it's written here now, it says no man calls Jesus a curse. No man can say that Jesus is a Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. They are referring to Jesus Christ. And the reason I'm stressing this is because I have stood before somebody that said Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And they were, they, they were not who they said to be. But they can't say Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. So when you come to the your last question, the spirit that said, this is not of God, is preaching. Did Jesus Is Jesus Christ your Lord or is Jesus Christ the Lord? And if it's, if it's of God, if it's truly the Spirit of God speaking, you're going to hear yes. If it's not, you're going to hear no. And you know, you need to bind that. And you need to, if it's, you know, the preaching isn't of God, I would get up and walk out. Yeah. I would get up in the middle of service and walk out. I'm not listening and putting that garbage in my ears. If it's not of God, I don't care. I'm not worried about being, you know, people being offended. If it's not of God, I am not going to put it into my spirit. Now, if the Lord was to say, wait, you know, wait, there's something or there may be somebody to, to minister to or somebody to, you know, when he sends me to a church or whatever. But otherwise, I will say, can I go? And I'll try the spirit on that too. Have I got up and left churches? Yes, I have. I don't care what you think. If you're spewing out garbage, and, and I've done prayed over the service and prayed over the people, and the Lord says I can get up and go, I'm leaving. I'm not going to listen to it. I don't have to. I'm going to be careful what I put in my ears, and what I put in my eyes, and what I put in my spirit. And I'll just say this, if I am in, in a church and the Lord has me visiting and the singing starts and if I can tell it is not godly, I'll get up and leave. Be careful what you put into your spirit. I find enough battles without adding more or opening any other doors for the de you know, demons and the spirits and the, to fight me more. I'm going to be wise in what I do as long as the Holy Spirit leads me. Now, if he, again, if he leads me there, I do cover myself in the blood, plead the blood over myself, ask for even Faraday cage of heaven gold over me, whatever he tells me to pray that day, I always ensure, you know, Father God, I reaffirm each piece of my armor, I put on the mind of Christ, the cloak of zeal, the cloak of righteousness, Father, with the robe of righteousness, with your help, help me keep that clean, in Jesus Christ's name, uh, the garment of prayer, I do that. But still, I don't want to add or have to open up to anything else. A lot of times I'll send you somewhere. See if you'll get up and go. Or see if you can discern. And other times we go because we want to and get ourselves in a mess. Just saying. Just saying, you know. Oh, so-and-so wants me to go. So-and-so, you better pray. It might be a trap. All right, I'm I'm rambling. I tend to ramble, and I I apologize for rambling, but not for anything that I've said. And Lord, unless I've said anything wrong, if I say anything wrong, I repent right now in Jesus Christ's name. All right, now I'm going to get off here. This is a serious word. We need to pray about it. People, though, please learn how to discern the spirits. It's for your own safety. And I I hear I've heard people complain. That's a lot of steps to do. Well, the alternate. You can be deceived. Jesus Christ would not have put them in there. Would not have had these words on how not to be deceived. If it wasn't necessary for us not to. So we won't be deceived. Every word in this Bible is important. Every word is important. 
right, but if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I would like to invite you right now to accept Him. He is He is a love like no other. I, I, I am at a lack of words at times for His love. I'm just, it's so... It's just so pure. Pure, undefiled. It's, it's good. It's... I don't have words for it. But He will love you when no one else will. You do not have to clean yourself up to come to Jesus Christ. You come to Jesus Christ and He'll clean you up. No matter what kind of a mess you're in. If you honestly want Him, need Him, we all need Him. He said, He'll fill that spot. Him and Father God will fill that spot. Is a spot that I call my God spot. Nothing else can feel. You were created to worship and love God Almighty and Jesus Christ. So I'm asking you, if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can only be saved through His name and His name alone. It's not by works that you're saved, but it's by grace. By the grace of God that He sent Jesus who was willing to come to die on the cross for you. What does that mean? That means to that point, he willingly allowed himself to be arrested, beaten, stripped, a crown of thorns put on his head. He laid on the cross and let them nail him to it. He stayed in agony on that cross when at any moment he could call angels down to remove him. He could have spoke one word and, and just killed everybody. But he hung there for love. He hung there for us. They didn't take his life. He gave it. Because when he said it is finished. Then he gave up the ghost. But he didn't stay dead. During that three days. He went down to hell. And he preached to the captives there. And set them free beginning of his his mission as a risen savior because we can't death can't keep him down he's the king of kings it was necessary for him to go and retrieve the keys from the kingdom of darkness they don't even have their own keys they don't even have their own keys jesus christ does and he gives them to us He is a hope. He is a hope. He is a hope and a peace like none other. He is joy and gladness in midst of turmoil and sorrow and sadness and persecution. He is that foundation. He is that safety belt that holds you secure when the plane is going down. He is Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who loves you whether you love Him or not. What love. And He will forgive you of what you consider your worst sins. You haven't blasphemed the Holy Spirit. But if you're still feeling that tug on your heart, or your heart's beating real fast, and you know He's calling to you, then rest assured, you're still savable. And he's calling out to you. It's time to, time to come to him. It's time to accept him. And quit running. And those of you that's backslidden and are running, it's time to turn around. It takes one step to turn back to him. His arms are wide open. And he's saying, come to me and come now. Please say this prayer with me. And it's your confession of faith and your disbelief. It's not works. You do not have to do anything to be saved except believe on Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean.
I believe, I believe you are the Son of God who came in the flesh born of a virgin. And I believe you were whipped and beat and tortured for me. And you gave your life. You hung on Calvary's cross for me. And I believe you shed your blood so I could be washed clean of my sins. I accept you into my heart as Lord and Savior. I believe you are the Son of God who came in flesh. I believe. I believe. You are my Lord and my King. In Jesus Christ's name, I confess you before God and man. Amen. And it's just that simple. It's just that simple. The gospel of Jesus Christ is simple. And people say, well, I can't live that life. Then you're trying to live it in your own strength. You're trying to do it on your own. It is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You want to know Jesus Christ, get in his word. I can't understand it. It's spiritually discerned. Once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to find that you're going to be beginning to understand it. Because understanding comes through the knowledge through Jesus Christ. And his Holy Spirit will teach you, John 14, 26. My recommendation is get the word in. I cannot stress that enough. Get the word of God in. You're going to need the word of God to stand. It takes the word of God to stand against the enemy. It takes the word of God to learn how to fight against the enemy. You do that through Jesus Christ's name. But you need to have that understanding of what his name is. You need to have the understanding of who he is. He's your shepherd. When you take and you just study what the shepherd does for his sheep. The care he gives. A tender care. It will open your eyes if the Lord leads. For you to study. And when it says he would lead the 90 and 9 to look for the 1. I've heard people say, well that's foolish. You got 99. Not to the 1 that's lost. It means everything to that one that's rescued. I was that one at time, one time. We got to think of the whole body of Christ. We've got to pray for one another in love. In love. And let the Holy Spirit lead us when we pray. Because I've heard people pray some very hard prayers. Because they had formed an opinion against someone. And more or less was striking judgment from their mouth. you got to be careful. you got to be careful. If you don't have a Bible, I recommend you get one. Um, I used to always just say, King James Version. I love the King James Version. There's a lot of things going on with it. But the fact is, what the Lord was showing me. When I was praying about all the things that's going on. Get the word in. And Holy Spirit. Will take what we have. So we have something to read. To get in. To put in. To hear. But will draw the truth. From the word forever settled in heaven. Jesus Christ. So that's why we in faith. We read. No matter what. What is done in this world. We make the effort. And we make the time. God is going to surpass what we expect. Because that's the kind of God he is. Take all this to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. You want to contact me? Again, please, just put prayer requests. Unless you're not unable to find the other. Understand. I, I have been just bombarded with emails that do not pertain to prayer. In the prayer email. And there are people. I'm dealing with. with um, we're dealing. When I say we're. Everyone that sends a prayer email. And then comes in here. We're dealing with some serious issues. Everything's serious. Prayer, every prayer request is serious. But when you're dealing with people. That's been attacked. And people that's been. 
physically attacked and, and things like that. You, you, you don't want to have to spend time digging through 12 or 15 emails of, of, of other stuff just to find the one. So it's not that I'm just saying please direct the others to questions at mylovelyjesus.info everything else but the prayer email unless you can't find the other email again but I'm giving it to you now it should be under this video pray at my lovely Jesus ministry dot info is for the prayer request because the questions now if you send something let the Lord lead you I'm not going to specify all I know is and I'm not here for your general conversation I just have to stress that because I'm having people send me things and expect me just to respond like a general conversation. I'm not here for that. I'm here to pray, help the lost. I will answer the questions in love as best I can. But unless the Lord tells me to open up communications, I am not here to communicate in that form. Email is the only way to contact me. But again, I will not unless the Lord leads. Form a conversation back and forth. There's a reason why he shut me off. And I will stay shut off. And I only, only go any further if the Holy Spirit leads. I'm getting ready to shut my cell phone off. I am going to be obedient to the Lord. And I'm removing every distraction that would try to come in. Because I am called to warn. I've been given dreams to share. And I am called to pray. I was an intercessor before everything else. And that is still very much part of who I am. And I will put things in God's priority. Those of you sent questions, you know that when he leads, I do send out answers. It may be a few days, but with the Lord's help, we'll get to it. I'm not trying to dissuade you from reaching out. Holy Spirit, lead me. How do I say this? I'm just saying I'm receiving a lot, sometimes from the same, same people. For one example, I had nine emails coming from the same person the other day. Nine emails, and they were not prayer requests. And so I asked the Lord, what do you want me to do? Do I sit down and read all of them? Not until the Lord says. I have not read them yet. He said, put them in a file. I want you to get the prayer first. Because I could tell just from you know the little thing, they are, these are not prayer emails. So please, please. Respect your brothers and sisters in need. I have shut myself off under the orders of Jesus Christ because there's answers and things I'm trying to seek, things that's going on, that he's speaking to me, and I cannot be distracted because you want to tell me your favorite color. You want to tell me that, you know, I'm not trying to, Lord, I love people and I love you. It's just I'm seeing Things that are trying to be sent in to distract me. And I'm saying it in love. I love you. Please understand. But if you send me a bunch of stuff. Everybody knows. And I've told this repeat, repeatedly. Unless the Lord Jesus Christ tells me. Or Holy Spirit tells me to read something. Or to watch something. Or I don't even. I pray about it. And he says no. I don't watch it. I don't read it. Well, I read headlines, read the title, most likely. Because then I'll say, is this something you want me to watch? Is this something I need to hear? How do you want me to proceed? That's the way we should be. I don't, I'm not going to put, because a lot of times you can be trying to, to, to be sent something. And it be, the, the heart be right, the person sending it in love, it, and it not be a godly video. It has deception in it. I'm not putting that in me. Guard your spirits, people. 
Pray about everything you watch. Pray about everything you read. Pray about everything you hear. Pray about everything. Because when you when you open yourself up, and that's what you're doing, when you are opening yourself up to watch something, and it could be that the person means well, but there's deception in it, you are opening yourself up to be attacked in that form, that area of your body, your spirit. Opening doors up for that enemy in that part. Okay, you watch something. It's not right. Then there's a battle in your mind. Because God's trying to say, hey, look, this is wrong. And yet you've had this in here that you willingly open the door to. You willingly consented by watching that. You open the door. Or by reading, say, for instance, this is a book on, it could be a godly topic. This is a book on Elijah and the prophets of Baal. You know, Elijah was my favorite prophet growing up. Chapter uh, First Kings chapter 18. But it's talking, you know, and you're reading their, their, their interpretation, and they interpret something wrong. If you don't catch it, that's false doctrine that just got into you. Even though it's, you know, now understand this. You can pray if the Lord leads you to read something. You pray, Lord, don't let me be deceived. You And if you catch it, and then you right there and stop saying, well, I don't receive that. I reject it in Jesus Christ's name. Because there's times I'll have you read stuff so that you can understand what's going on in the world. So you can understand. But you've got to be, be wise. Be wise. Be wise. Wise in Jesus Christ. So if you pray before you read something and you start praying and you feel a mm, you know, like a mm, like a in your spirit or a, a hesitant or something like a little nudge, or, that means Holy Spirit is trying to tell you, hey, something's off here or hey, you don't need to read that because it may not be that it's it's what's good for some people is not good for other meaning. You may have a weakness in that area where you've already been fought or you've been delivered from something or and that's a familiar spirit to you and you you may have to battle more than the other person. That's why. And until God convicts people of some sins, it's not sin until they get convicted because they don't understand. It's not, not made to them aware of it. It's not drawn to their attention so they're not convicted of it yet because we're all on different levels and the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ, they work together and they're going to not just slam you and say, okay, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this in a way. In gentleness and love, they move and they teach you. They teach you and as they teach you, they're going to peel things away from you. They're going to start Showing you the things that are displeasing and that you need to remove from your life. But they're not going to flay you like a, you know, flay you, strip it off like flaying your skin off. They, it, everything is done in love. Now, you can be reprimanded. Yeah. You can have a Job moment where, you know, God says, I'm going to demand of you. You know, where were you when, when I made the stars? Where were you? Be careful. God is a God of love. But we should always have that reverent fear. We should have that all. We're not to demand anything from God. God, why did you do this? Why did you? You're talking to God Almighty. You need to have some respect. I've been guilty of that myself. Been put in my place. I have. I've had one of those Job moments. I've had one or two of them. And it's like, Lord forgive me father and i'm so sorry i have repented because i did not realize what i was doing but still he deserves honor and respect and love and they don't know us anything jesus christ did everything for us already but they still keep giving and giving and giving because they love us So please, I didn't mean to get on that. Please, please, please pray about everything. Pray about your watch. What you watch. Um, I think as David said, I was setting an evil thing before my eyes. There's a reason for that. You pollute your spirit with all these things. You open up doorways, attack points, access points. 
And that part can be demonized. And what I mean by demonized means that part you've opened up is opened up for attacks and can even have the, the kingdom of darkness can have control of that area. Because you consented and came into agreement, opened that door and said, here, come on in. You can sit right here on this part of my life. Pray about what I'm saying. I'm not asking you to accept my word. I'm asking you to lay it before God. Lay it before Jesus Christ in Jesus Christ's name. This is what I'm dealing with one-on-one -on -one in all these emails. Open doorways. Open doorways. Permission granted to the enemy to create chaos in your life. Stay under the blood. Know that Jesus Christ is coming. There's a lot of things coming, but what we're supposed to do, we're supposed to stay focused on Jesus Christ and Him alone. And whatever happens, happens. Pray for the lost. Pray for your brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. God bless. Stay under the blood always. From Tennessee, bye-bye.